So uh, this is great. Uh, we need to actually get a block first uh, because blocks are easier to work with. So I'm just going to quickly uh, name this something. Uh, we'll call it uh, sorter or move uh, chest um, mover. Why not? And then what we're going to do is we're just going to set a texture. I'm just going to quickly import one. Um, uh, we will go with something for my mod just quickly. So we'll go to our YouTube and then I have mods and then I should have some extra textures that can be used. So machine block, we'll just use that one here and then we'll set up this like that. So we have just a texture that we can use. Now what we want to do is we want to basically just set all the properties up how we want. I'm just going to set this to five and six. So it's like an iron block and then we're going to set the material to that and I'm just going to set this under redstone so it's easier to find. We'll set the breaking properties to an iron pickaxe and it can drop itself that's all good. Uh, now the tick rate will basically control how fast the items are moved. Now if it's at a higher tick rate then what it's going to do is it's going to go a lot slower and move the items between each slot. Uh, how the system basically works is it's going to try every slot at a time. So we'll try that um, at one tick update and then we'll set the color on map to iron. Uh, generally you want to make sure that blocks that have inventories are blocked so they don't easily get broken. Uh, chests, furnaces all use this kind of mechanic, but we're not actually going to be using an inventory for this block. We're just going to be basically moving it from one chest to another on the other side of it. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to need um, to set up a procedure for our update tick. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, first things first, we're actually going to need to actually set up the procedure to test if there is a chest on the other side of the block. So we're going to get the block over on the other side. And we actually need to test if there is a chest uh, north of the block. So we'll go Z minus minus one and then we also want to test if there is one on the other side of the block so south of the block and then we need to create a and statement like this and then we'll set up it like that so now we just need to select our chests now there's two different types of chests, there is redstone chests and there is the regular chests and they're both right down here. So we're going to select the regular one and then we're just going to delete the other space and just move that down there. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is we need to basically test for the other direction for your y, y direction. So what we're going to do is just basically move that over here and then we're going to set both of these coordinates up like this. So now it's going to be basically testing if there is a chest on the north and south side or if there is a chest on the east and west side. And now we basically just need to convert all the items from the inventory from one chest to the other chest. So in our case what we're going to do is we're going to do the lower coordinate. So Z for basically our input. and or pardon me, north for our input and south for our output and west for our input and east for our output. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to actually know how many slots each chest has. We know that there it's a 9 by 3 slot. So now that is only if it is a single chest. It's a little bit more complicated if it gets into double chest. I'm not sure if it's possible with double chest, but I do know that 
um, you can do this with a single chest. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go and create 27 times for basically a repeater. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to go and test for the amount of items in the slot. And then what we're going to do, uh, we need to test also we're going to actually need a couple variables. We need a slot variable, so slot uh, number, and we're going to set that to a number variable. This is a local one, so we're actually going to get the items from a specific slot, and we're going to update this slot number to our slot number here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see if it's equal to or or perm, we'll just test if it's greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, then what we also want to do is test if it's the same item. So same item in our current slot to our item in the next slot over. So what we actually also need to do is test if the item over on the other side has the room for it. So we need another variable. We're going to set uh, slot to number and this will test for the slot on the other side uh, for the ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to get um, this set up and we're going to test now if it is equal to or less than or probably we, we want to test if it's less than 64. So if it's less than 64, and then we also want to test if the item in our first slot is equal to the item in our second slot. So we'll set our slot number here, and we'll set this to our second slot as well. So if the items in our second chest are basically our south chest is less than 64 and it will be equal to the same um, item as the other chest then what we want to do is basically move it over so we need an and statement now this is only part of the script uh, we also need to test if it's error as well so we're going to put these like that and then we're going to actually test if slot 2 is equal to an air slot so we'll just choose our regular error and what this will do is it'll basically test if if it's empty or if it has the same item and it's equal to or basically less than 64 if it's less than 64 then what we want to do is we want to set that slot so set one but we actually need to increase that number so we need slot two, and then we need to get a math number, and we'll put that here, and then we'll go slot plus one, and then we'll replace that with set our one to that number here. Now, what we need to do is we need to update our item that we're putting in, and we're going to select our first chest that we're pulling from after which we need to set our inventory for our second slot so we can use our second slot ID right here and we also need to target the specific block that we're going to be pulling into now all these coordinates have to be updated now so for example this one here is on our south side so we need to update that to this block here uh, this is on our or pardon me this is on our north side this is on our south side so we're going to put that here. This is on our other one and that. So like this and like that. And then we have our south side here and another south side. And this is a north side. So we'll go south, south, whoop, south and we need a north right here and then we also need a south 
over here as well. All right, so that's set up now. We can actually pull items into the chest now from that. Uh, now we need to set up uh, the other direction. So what we need to do is basically just move this over and then we're going to update our coordinates to these ones here. So conveniently, the way that we have it set up, all we need to do is set this up like this. And what we'll do is it will basically pull from that side. So I'll just quickly do this and then we'll hop into how to set up the repeaters quickly. All right, so now we they oh, <laughs> all right. Uh, now that we have the two different scripts that we need to basically move the items, we actually need to update the slot IDs as well. So right now we're just testing for the slot IDs, but we're not actually telling it to basically change them. So in order to do that, we need to go to variables, and then we're going to grab our slot ID, and then we're going to set the default slot ID to zero. And we need to set our default slot ID for the other one to zero as well. The, the second one that we're basically putting in, we're going to put it in just above the other repeater. And this will basically allow us to set the slot every time the inner or the outer repeater goes. It's going to set the ID back to zero. So that's important for basically testing inner um, repeaters so it doesn't continue counting upwards. Uh, we need to reset it every time the inner or the outer repeater uh, runs the inner repeaters. So the other thing that we need is we need to set our other one to the top of the other repeater for our main, main slot. So we're going to do this and then we're going to put the other one over above here. Now that's just to reset the actual script that's not to actually move it or change the slot we actually need to grab another variable and set the value to variable plus variable or pardon me variable plus var uh, variable plus one so we need to go and grab our variable and then we need to go and increase that by one and then we're going to set that inside our repeaters. So for example, uh, this is our regular slot one. So what we want to do is we want to run that at the end of the script for the repeater. And we're going to set this one up for our, our second uh, variable here. So we can put that just at the bottom. And what this will do is it will increase every time it runs uh, test is test for the inner part. So when the inner outer repeater runs it's going to basically just before that it's going to set the variable to zero it's going to run all this stuff in here and then it's going to increase by one now when this actually runs it's also going to reset the second variable and then it's going to run it 27 times for the other chest and then it's going to increase every time this content here is basically run so after the 27 times it repeats this is going to increase and then it's going to basically set the second variable back to zero and then it's going to repeat that process. So that should be all the script that you actually need to basically convert one chest on one side of the block to another chest on the other side of the block. So one important thing that we actually need to do before we actually test the script is make sure that when we're actually testing the two different types of basically uh, options for moving the items, if the slot is empty and the, or the basically the item is the same as the other one, we need to make sure that this statement right here, this operation, is set to or so just set that to the or if it's and then it's not going to work properly because it can't be a item of the same type and an error block at the same time so make sure that's set to or and one more thing that i forgot to actually do is we need to actually remove the item as well from the slot so what you want to do is grab the um item from block and then we want to remove and then what we want to do is remove from the 
first slot for the one that we're sending it from in the, oh, pardon me, uh, remove one from the slot and then the coordinates for that. So in our case, we want it to remove from our negative one for this one, and then we want to remove the other item from the uh, same slot, but at different coordinates. So we want it to be negative X here. So that's important to basically make sure that it's not going to dupe the items because if it does have the um, items in the first slot and then it moves it over, then it's just not, and it doesn't remove the items, then what it's going to do is it's going to basically just keep spawning that item into the other chest. So unless you want to do that, that's fine. But um, in most cases to properly move it over, you need the remove block here. All right, so let's go into game now. <laughs> Alright, so we're now in game, and if we were to grab a couple stack, different stacks of items, we're going to just grab some sand, we're going to grab some just random things that are around our environment, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just throw them into this chest right here. Uh, this is facing our north side, and it should pull it from this chest over to this chest, which is on our south side. Now this one is east is over here, so our west one that it'll be pulling from is on this side over here. So let's throw the logs in here. As you can see, it practically instantly updates it. Um, now it did actually split all the logs into a specific slot. Now if you don't want it to do that, we can actually do a few different things in order to fix that. Now, uh, obviously there is certain uh, things now we're actually re using a repeater in the inner repeater now that would work fine But uh, we also need to if we want to make it move an entire slot over then we need to separate that in a certain way So let's quickly do that and I'll show you how you can basically get um, a single slot set up All right, so what we need to do is we need to test for a specific item. I, obviously, we're doing that, but uh, we should test. Um, rather than continue repeating this process, what we want to do is break out of it. So we're going to actually put the repeater or break process right here. And what this is going to do is it's going to basically stop this repeater from continuing over and over again. So basically what this does is as soon as it finds the condition of it being an air slot or it being the um, particular slot for the same item, uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to basically cancel out that particular procedure. And then in all technicality, it should continue along the slots like normal, but it's going to uh, break out of the slot if it can add it to that particular slot. So we're just going to add those two blocks to the procedure in the after it adds the item and then we'll quickly go back in game and take a look at it. All right, so let's try this again. Uh, we will put this in here and it should filter it all into the first slot here. So we'll do that for all our items. And as you can see, all the items are going into the proper slots. So that's basically how you can set that up. Now we'll try the other direction as well. Just grab all those items, we'll put them over here. And we can see that they're all going into these slots here. So that's basically how you can basically move things over. Now, the one thing about uh, the chest itself is the first slot up here is zero, and then down here is 26. Now there's actually 27 slots, but because it's starting at zero, that it's shifted minus one in the total number of the slot IDs. So because there's 27 slots, starts at zero, you actually subtract one from 27 and that gets you the the highest ID for that particular block. Uh, double chests are a little bit different. They go a lot higher in number, uh, I think double that, but it uses the same method to basically detect the fully one on the other side. Now I'm not sure 
how it would react to being put into another chest on this side. It might crash, I'm not sure. But uh, you can do that for pretty much any item or block in game uh, that has an inventory. I'm not sure about chat, uh, the crafting tables. Crafting tables are a little bit different, but I know that dispensers, uh, droppers, things like that, you can also do, and their slots start at zero and then work up to eight. So those are those uh, IDs there. Um, hoppers only have five, five slots, so it starts at zero and goes to four. So those are for hoppers. Um, as far as the other ones are considered, the trap chest is the exact same thing as a regular chest. It has the same IDs as that. I don't know if there's any other actual crafting that I've tried. Uh, I'm not sure about the shulker boxes. I haven't ever tried to put items into them. Uh, the barrel is very similar to a single chest. It only has 27 slots, so it starts at zero, ends at 26. And, um, yeah, you, you basically get the idea of that. So, uh, hopefully you guys found today's tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I'll try to find a reliable source for getting the IDs for all the different types of blocks and stuff like that. I recall having a site a long time ago, but I'll have to find it again. Um, but I will make sure to add it to the description when I publish the video. So if you're new to my channel again, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below. That helps the algorithm and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.